This video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. If any of you are interested in learning UX design, Dev Mountain is a 12 week design bootcamp intended to get you a full time job in the industry. You can learn more about this at devmountain.com or click the link in the description below. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Will Patterson here again with a different tutorial. Today, I'm actually gonna be showing you how to put these shadows in your hand lettering like you're seeing here. Now, it's gonna basically be like this at first, where you have the flat hand lettering here or flat font or whatever you're using. And then I'm going to show you how to put these shadows on top and to show you where to place them and how you can understand them and how to make it look like this effect. Okay, so this document here is just a document from Procreate on my iPad that I've pulled in and basically it allows you to keep layers. So I've got my hand lettering layer here just as normal. You can see it here, here's Paris and here's the background. And what we're gonna do is press Command J and that's gonna duplicate Paris. And I always do this just because I wanna make sure that Paris or that the lettering is not going to be destroyed through the process, even though it's fairly impossible. I'm gonna right click the layer that I'm using and turn it to red so I can very easily see if it should be red or not. I'm just gonna move the layer paths like this up here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a layer on top and I'm gonna call it by double clicking shadows. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a clipping mask. Now a clipping mask basically means that if I get a brush on this layer and let's say it's an orange or green brush, you can see that just here you can see all the, in fact, let me just show you. You can see that if I have just normal layer and a green brush, um, that is just going to go everywhere. But if I put the layer that I'm wanting to put the brush on, on top of the lettering or above the lettering layer, and I press Alt, and then click when I see that little ring there or that little arrow pointing down, you see that the layer has shifted. Now I wanna try and draw, it's not gonna work unless I'm on top of this layer. This is what a clipping mask basically does. It allows you to create uh, things on top of a specific layer like this and only on that layer. It's just a very easy way of doing it. So that's what we're going to be doing. So the first thing I'm going to do actually is change my color to black. And the brush that I'm using it's just one of the default brushes like this. And I've got a size of 50 and a hardness of zero. It's more important that your hardness is at zero because we're going to be creating very shadowy like shadows, if that makes sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to bring up my brush again, pressing B or go over to the left here. And I'm going to go up to my opacity up here and I'm going to change this to about eight, which is what it was before. And that means that it's not going to be very uh, scene. I can put that to 10 actually just to see if I get a better effect of it. But basically that means that we're going to get some nice shadows. It's not going to be too harsh. And I'm on this shadows layer here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work out where the shadows are. Now when I wrote this out, I know that I came up like so and then I came down and back up. So that means that this part here is going to be the shadow because that was the first part here. And basically all the new parts are going to be the ones that are highlighted. So I'll give you a little example. I'm gonna press B to get to my shadows or my brush tool here. And I know I want this part to be shadowed off. And we can do it very easy by just going ahead and dragging like this. And I've done that twice because of the gradient that it gives. So I'm going over it once then going over it twice. And what this does is it gives a nice little appearance of a shadow just here. The next thing we need to do is press E, and there's plenty of different ways of actually doing this, but I prefer just using uh, the sort of eraser tool because I've got a Wacom tablet, it makes it a bunch easier. If you don't have a Wacom tablet, you might have to select carefully where you want to delete the shadows. But now we need to delete the shadows. And the brush that I'm using here is basically the same brush, but the hardness is at about 82% and it is a smaller brush size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out or by trial and error where the shadows should be. So I'm pressing undo every now and then but I know that I want this part to look kind of good, even though there's a bit of a problem with the letter in here. I want it to look like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go deeper into here. Just so I create another bit of a shadow there, a bit too much. And then just erase it away like so. 
and I'm growing fairly quick. I'd be going a bit slower if I had the time, but I don't because it's a video. But there you go, you can see the first brush there. Zoom out to make sure it looks like a bit of a shadow and then we'll carry on. So the next part of this is down here because we've got this part overlapping. And the A is obviously the first thing. So the actual handle of the A here, the stem is going to be the one that's highlighted. So the shadow part is going to be here. So I'm going to go ahead, increase my brush size a little bit. And I'm going to go here like so. I'm going to make sure I get it right and do it twice. And that gives a nice little gradient going there. It's supposed to be very subtle. Press E to get my eraser tool. Zoom in actually. And then we're going to follow this like so. And if you make a mistake, just undo it. Kind of like that. But I know that I need to be a bit further up here, like so. And you can be as precise as you want to be, but it's a good idea to get these things pretty precise. So I'm just going to keep going at this and maybe if I screw up a little bit, I can always bring more back in. But if you do that, you run the risk of ruining the actual effect. You could just select it, but it doesn't matter. Okay, here's the interesting part. So now we have the A going into the R. Now I know this is coming up first. So this part is going to be highlighted just here. So I'm going to go back to my brush, make it a bit bigger. And I'm gonna come down like so, twice. We've got a bit of a gradient here. So the darkest part is where I first had the brush, right? And then we're gonna repeat the process. So using the eraser, going to erase that part here and any other parts up here to give that contrast. And we'll do the same here again. Making sure I get it right. It takes a couple of times sometimes. There we go. And um, we add the contrast with the sharp line. And there we go. Then we just repeat the process. Now I have seen here that we need to gradient this bit out more. So you can always gradient it a bit more out. And then we've got nothing overlapping here until we get to the eye. So we just do the same. And then just here, we kind of play around with it. And take your time with it. you're really just trying to give the illusion that something's being revealed on top of it. As you can see, the effect is taking place. And we do the same down here because the S is overlapping the sort of intersection here. So down here again. And remember this brush or the, the shadows are only affecting the layer because of the clipping mask, only affecting the hand lettered layer. There's one. Let me do this again. This one's a bit difficult, so we'll have to see how it goes. But oh, I think I did it pretty well just there. I mean, it takes a, quite a bit of time to work out. And we do the same here. We go back down because this is a shadow bit part here. And I know for myself, I came back in like so. And we've got that just there. And that is the Paris in sort of 3D with shadows and everything. And you can spend as much time as you want to. Like, for instance, I probably would increase my brush size and just go over a few bits here um, just to make sure they're looking uh, decent when it's fully zoomed out. But it gives a new sort of dimension to your work. Now, I should have had my brush size a bit larger because I've missed out some of these corner parts here of the shadows. But that is okay. You can just keep going back over it if you need to to make it look a bit better and see how it goes in time. But yeah, so thank you so much for watching this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, slap a like and also subscribe to the channel for more tutorials like this one where I'm going to be showing you how I change my hand lettering and how I do certain techniques like this. So thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next video. See you soon.